right away I'm inviting us to consider what are you focusing on? What are you focusing on in your life? Okay, so I am here at Mile High Church, which is many paths to the one. It doesn't have a specific religion. And I feel like it's really cool. I'm really excited. I'm about to go in. In your personal life, in the life that we share together, what is the focus? Because the focus determines the experience. just got back from my second church on what I'm calling my faith odyssey, or to keep it simple, my faith tour. And this week I went to a church called Mile High Church in Lakewood, Colorado. And this church was different from Red Rocks Church because this is more of an inner faith church. So it's very much that they believe that there's many paths to the creator or to one and to God. And I feel that there was a lot of resonance here with their beliefs because it spoke a lot about God, but in the sense of energy and the universe. And that's typically where my spiritual journey got reconnected after my Catholic journey. But what was really cool before I get into kind of what I learned and what my reflections are is that my Uber driver on the way there was like, oh, you're going to church, and her whole conversation was about faith and spirituality and the Bible, and he grew up in a Mormon household, and then he studied the Bible, and he was just giving me like his reflections and understandings of what he believes to be his beliefs. This whole journey is just allowing me to really get clear on what it is that I believe. Okay, I can take that, I can adopt that. Ooh, I'm curious about that. Ooh, I'm feeling contraction around that. Rather than a lot of this has been, a, a lot of my spiritual journey has been really about taking spiritual belief systems from certifications, books, uh, teachers, mentors, guides, and adopting them as my own because I feel that that was what was right. Rather than saying, okay, I can build my own faith and it can be exactly how I feel most connected. I didn't really get into like the entire reason why I'm on this faith tour, but the deepest premise of it is that I was feeling exhausted. I was feeling like I was spinning my wheels and they were just having no tra traction or tread and I was getting nowhere. And ultimately what I realized through this experience is that there was this deep level of exhaustion, this deep hunger that couldn't be nourished, this deep thirst that couldn't be quenched. And the more I started to show up in my business and to step into my purpose, it felt like I had to do more. And I was having a conversation with a friend yesterday at dinner and he was explaining like the law of diminishing returns, which is something that I deeply believe in, but it's that I had to do more to get similar or less of a result and I was getting exhausted and as I was listening to a sermon by Stephen Furtick on YouTube he was talking about this idea of feeling winded and that you're doing so much and you're human that your human gets winded it needs a minute to catch its breath right it's like doing a big amount of cardio unexpected cardio and being like whoo I wasn't prepared for that and needing to catch your breath. So it's not that I was out of alignment with my purpose, or I should say it's not that I was disconnected from my purpose, but I felt like there was a slight misalignment, meaning that I was trying to do it from my ego, from my worldly human side without allowing source and spirit and God to be the leading energy in which 
moved through me through my purpose. So I deeply believe, this is a deep belief that I know to be true, is that we must do the inner work at the human level. So moving through our human traumas, pains, wounds, experiences, and then we must do the work um, at the spiritual level to move through any sort of religious trauma that may be alive and really explore what faith, God, source, universe, whatever it is, means to us. And through that, there is a connection between the physical and the metaphysical. So that's what I believe to be true. And I've always known that I'm a conduit or a vessel for the, the communication between the physical and the metaphysical. And I feel that even more in depth now that I am going on this faith tour, faith odyssey. With that being said, Mile High Church is an inner faith church, believing that there's multiple paths to the one. So I was having a conversation with My Uber driver on the way there, the one that was telling me about his exploration with faith and God and the Bible. And what I came into explanation of was I really believe I have a deep connection to the feminine through the Hindu teachings. So a lot of the Hindu goddesses I resonate with. I use a lot of these archetypes in my rituals and practices when it comes to the feminine And what I was really realizing is that I'm lacking the spiritual masculine and there's an absence of the spiritual masculine. And so I'm going on this faith tour, not because I think that God lives in these structures, but I'm going on this faith tour to understand different belief systems. I'm going on this faith tour to explore what spirituality means to me, what God means to me, because I can do it in the comfort of my own home, but That's why we need mentors, right? Mentors are so powerful because they give us alternate perspectives. They give us different points of view. They give us different ways of thinking. They invite us to explore deeper within ourselves. And I feel that the exploring of different temples, churches, mosques, uh, just spiritual gatherings, I get to have discernment and to understand what works for me, what my faith is and what I can let go of or not adopt. Or um, I can explore why I'm triggered by certain topics or certain ways of explaining God. And I can go deeper within to understand why I'm triggered to heal any religious trauma that I may have. I know, if there's one thing I know, I know that God is everywhere within everything. And we are all a, an expression of God. That is my belief. I can find God through someone speaking something to me that I needed to hear, right? I can feel it in my, in my pleasure. I can feel it through um, partnership. I can feel it through my creations and my business. And that's really what I want to feel with more depth. So I'm not seeking God. I'm, I'm desiring a deepening with the spiritual masculine because the spiritual masculine feels like that's my next level of Uh, feminine evolution and that's my next level of leadership of being a guide being a divine partner and, and creating a divine union as well so what I've come to notice is that my father my worldly father and I have created such a beautiful bond and have done so much healing where he sees me he knows me I can express who I am he may not believe in the things that I believe but he always accepts me he challenges me and inspires me and motivates me to be the best version of myself. He's always there to root for me and to uh, stand by me with every endeavor that I try, that I look into, that I discover. And he's been that way since I was a child. But there were some pieces where we we had misalignment. And I feel that we're really in a beautiful union of father-daughter uh, relating now. And so the next level of that is that since I've healed the the relationship with my worldly father, I have a deep desire to heal the relationship with my spiritual father. And because there's polarity in life and there's always the masculine and feminine flowing through everything that we do and see and connect with and feel is this lack of the masculine. I think I had rejected and denied and felt afraid of and disgusted by God because of the way Catholicism illustrated your relationship with God. I didn't get to explore it for myself and that's nothing bad. It's just, this is my path, right? And so I get to explore my relationship with God. I feel it's going to really allow me to build a really open and expansive 
relationship with God. So Mile High Church is an interfaith church. It believes that there's multiple paths to the one. And that spoke to me massively when I walked in and I saw that as a sign in their church, which I'll show right here. So I believe that I'm creating my own path to the one. And my friend sent me this post on Instagram the other day that was about God speaks to you in the language that you can understand. So he's not necessarily like this is how he's relating to me. This is how he's guiding me so I can create a deeper relationship with him. Because if it was just about a religion and a religious construct, I would deny it. I would run from it. I would put my arms up, right? Like, no, because I'm not a strong believer in religion because of where I came from. So I believe that religious has board, religion has borders and boundaries, whereas your own relationship with God gets to be infinite, boundless. This was really cool. Mile High Church, Inner Faith, they had a lot of really cool explanations of like the Celtic four directions. They had mandalas, they had an expression of like the rosary, a mala, like Japanese prayer beads. Like it brought all of the things that I connect to from different cultures and different religions into one place. So I felt very seen and very understood there because I'm like, okay, I really connect with that and I connect with that. My belief is that in a past life, I've been a part of multiple different cultures and that's why I connect so massively to different pieces of different religious beliefs or different cultures, right? I've also done a lot of traveling and there's a lot of love in my heart for the Hindu and Buddhist um, belief systems. So that felt really amazing. The overall vibe of the church itself felt a little bit older, um, a little bit older of a crowd, which was kind of cool to see like this multi faceted and inter-belief system church held a lot of wisdom, right? A lot of older, older generations, a lot of elders. So that was really powerful. I did go to the 8 a.m. mass because I'm going to hang out with my friend and go to lunch in a little bit. So I don't know if that's maybe why the, the crowd was a little bit older because, you know, old people like to get up early. Maybe I'm just stereotyping. But so I'd be interested to see if I went back like at the 10 a.m. mass, what that would be like. So it was an older crowd. It felt not as lively and exciting and I didn't feel as connected in the actual church service itself. So in Red Rocks Church, there was a lot of music. I connect what I'm realizing is to God through music. Um, there was a lot of like movement in the speaking. So in the pastor at Red Rocks here it was more so a little bit lower of an energy and I didn't feel God flowing through me in this space the way that I did at Red Rocks Church. I'm just exploring, I'm just observing, I'm the observer. I'm like almost being the drone in the room or the fly on the wall as I go through this experience so I can just witness myself through every single experience. So I didn't feel as connected, as alive. I had a few tears come down when I left Red Rocks Church I was bawling my eyes out like I had a full-blown like ah, cry and you can feel probably through the last video my energy was a little bit more relaxed and and calm like I feel like spirit had moved and worked through me the experience also throughout the day was a lot more connected so the couple sitting in the chairs next to me in the aisle next to me offered to like give me a ride home, like the conversations were very connected. I just felt very deeply connected to God. Through this, I felt more seen. I felt more at home in the teachings and present with what was being spoken, but not as connected. And I don't know, just something to explore. I don't know if it's because, I don't know why. I don't really don't know, but that's just my observation. And I know that God is in all things, so I can just take that energy that I felt today and, and go connect deeper with God through what I'm calling my conversations with God. Prayer still feels 
edgy to me. It still feels contracting to me. It still feels like a religious construct to me. So I'm saying conversations with God. There are times when prayer does, the word prayer does feel good, but I'm just paying attention. I'm deprogramming, deconstructing old ways of I of thinking that I had to connect to religion. I'm just sharing open, vulnerably. Here I am. Here I am, baby. Here I am. Ooh, speaking of that, the singer, though, was so alive. I was like, oh, I could feel her voice and her soul through her words. So I'm going to share that clip right here. And then last two pieces, one is just the overall message of the church itself. The message that was being spoken, the word that was being spoken in this church was about speaking truth to circumstances. I had to look down at my notes over here. Speaking truth to circumstances. So really being able to understand that our circumstances are not truth, there's truth that creates circumstance. So really being able to understand that the way we speak then creates our reality, right? Which is a lot of the teachings that I already talk about in my own work when it comes to the trauma, um, the somatic, the sensuality, sexual embodiment um, of the self-intimacy work that I do, of the liberated leadership that I work that I do. Speaking will create a circumstance or a condition, right? The what you fixate on and focus on will become what you see in your external world. I love this. I connect with this. I believe this. It wasn't a new message. I know it. But it was just a reminder of what are my conversations about primarily? Am I focusing on the troubles that I'm currently having? Am I looking through dimmed sunglasses or am I looking through rose-colored glasses and being opportunistic and looking at the possibility and potentiality of what this season of my life that feels very directionless but full of direction, if that makes sense. So I don't feel that my human is in control of the direction that I'm going anymore. But I feel that Source and God are directing me in a way that is really powerful and that I've never felt like this before. It's like a an amplified experience of what I felt three and a half years ago before I moved to Colorado. Okay. And then the second message that she shared that really resonated, which is what I just spoke about, is really about, I see expression of God in all life and all things. So this plant behind me is an expression of God. This hat is an expression of God. The pillows and couch that I'm sitting on are expression of God. I'm expression of God. You are expression of God. Because God speaks life through all things. The other piece that I found really powerful is that God will give us free will. And it's our duty and job to embark on a spiritual quest to connect with him. And I feel like this is what I'm doing. It's so wild. Um, So very powerful and... I felt connected to the conversation. I didn't feel moved by the conversation, if that makes sense. I was like, yeah, I get it. Okay, thanks. Take some notes. Got it. But I didn't feel emotionally evoked through the conversation that was being spoken. I don't know why. I'm going to sit with that. I'm going to go into conversations with God after I share this uh, video. So maybe we'll stay tuned for next week. So my biggest takeaway for... This experience myself is really just to be able to understand that God is in all things, which I've known, but it was a confirmation of that and a really beautiful understanding of like, make sure you are speaking to the reality that you desire, right? So beautiful message. I feel at the end of the day, I would probably go back just to give it another chance because 
you can't get like the whole view of it always in one sitting. So I would probably go back. The one thing that I observed, which is vulnerable and super vulnerable to share because I feel I've done so much work through this space, is I witnessed that my family dynamic growing up was very judgy. They judged themselves. They judged each other. They judged Sally walking down the street. They judged Bob at the store. Like there was a lot of judgment in their tone, in their conversation. There was a lot of talking about each other behind each other's back. And that was on the feminine side of my family. So what I noticed is there's still underlying tones of my ego wanting to judge what someone's wearing or how someone's moving their body and really being able to just sit and witness the idea of judgment and to know that it's a piece of what I obviously judge within myself. So as I was witnessing this experience, And because I didn't feel as connected to this space as I did to, say, the Red Rocks Church, is there was these underlying tones or these whispers of judgment towards the speaker, towards the performer. And at the end, she came to this explanation of really when we feel that we're not accepting, because she was talking about in division, right, in in separation, there is a lot of pain and disconnect. And I was like, oh shit, that's what I've been witnessing within myself sitting here is little subtle whispers or tones or threads of judgment. And so she really had us come into the space where you see someone that you're judging or you feel someone that you're judging and you say, I accept you and I send you blessings. And my interpretation of that is I'm sorry, right? I'm sorry for judging you. And you're not saying it to their face. You're doing this through energy. I'm sorry, I accept you. I love you. And that's really a practice that I'm going to take into this week is every time I feel a subtlety of judgment is, I'm sorry. I accept you. I love you. And the more I can do that, that's the frequency of love moving through me. And I'm reading the text, A Course in Miracles right now, which is really about anything that is not love is not that of the Holy Spirit of of God. So I feel that there's a lot of fear and judgment that's still like not loud, but very subtle that I'm ready and willing to move through. So that was really powerful to witness. And yeah, it's a journey. It's simply a journey. And last week I shared my journey and I had a few people reach out that were, I guess, in deep desire to share their opinions about what I should and shouldn't be doing on this journey, right? I had a woman say that it's really, I don't remember her words, but basically why am I going to church every Sunday? That's kind of excessive if God is in everything. And my reply as I've sat with it more and more is, why would you hire a mentor or a coach if everything you need is already within you, right? It's to illuminate an understanding, it's to go to a place to deepen, it's to remember who you've always been or where God has always been. It's not that I need church to feel and connect with God, it's I'm in a, I'm learning, I'm exploring, I'm deepening. And while I have a lot of my own pieces where I don't necessarily agree with these places that I go to, there's a lot that I'm learning. There's a lot of richness that I'm inheriting. And simply to be able to know what my faith is, because if I don't, if I know what I don't connect with, then that's a deeper understanding of what I do. Then I'll know what I do connect with and I can continue to grow and deepen and amplify my relationship with God. So that's the first piece. The second piece is when I can go to meet at a specific place with God, then it's almost like I'm going on a date, right? You could have a man come over to your house and you could connect with him, but if you're getting to know him, you probably wouldn't bring him to your house the first couple times, right? Same thing with I feel with God is that I wanna go to a more sacred place where I can feel in full devotion without distraction to understand what my relationship is with God. I also, I am in a year-long sacred sexuality program with Layla Martin, and there's a lot that I'm exploring through my feminine, through my sexuality, through my body, the sacred temple of my body, and how to 
connect with source God spirit through my pleasure practices, through orgasm, through how I express and experience pleasure. Because at the end of the day, I know I'm calling in a divine partner who is going to be expression of God, just like I shared earlier today. And I want to be able to feel the divinity in sexuality. And I know that's my purpose here is about self-intimacy and understanding how that feels for me. So there's a lot of pieces with this faith odyssey that I want to continue to share more of. And later on, we have um, a call with Layla Martin. Her team calls it the Pussy Church. So I'm exploring that and the feminine side of how to bring the masculine in to penetrate my body spiritually, God, right? Lots that is transpiring. And I feel this is a very tender and vulnerable season for me, for I've always known the direction that I'm going. Since I left college, I knew I was going to get a job. I got the job. I knew after that job, I was not feeling connected and alive in myself so I became a bodybuilder like I always knew what the next step was after corporate world I knew I was going to become a personal trainer so I had this whole plan I planned it out and made it happen personal trainer I knew I was going to rock it rocked it at personal training became the top trainer in like eight to nine months from personal training I knew I was going to take them and build my own personal training business from personal training I then had the idea that I knew I was supposed to leave and build an online business it was all with an understanding of the trajectory that I was supposed to be an online coach I always knew my next step And right now, I feel like I have an understanding of the vision of what I'm supposed to do when it comes to my purpose and when it comes to the life that I'm supposed to lead. And I feel it's really massive, but I feel I haven't even barely scratched the surface of what I'm here to do. And so when there is uncertainty, when I feel like I don't know the answers, I was trying to figure them out logically on my own and kind of muscle my way through life. Whereas now I feel when I don't know and I feel uncertain, there's a lot more trust and faith to turn to God, to hand it over to God, to source, to spirit. And I still feel contraction or hesitancy to say the word God. That's why you'll hear me say God and then I'll be like God, source, universe, right? And that may shift, change. I don't know, but we're here for the journey. There's a lot that I'll share that I feel uncomfortable with in hopes that you can explore places and spaces in which you feel uncomfortable, where you can be more open to people's belief systems outside of what you believe to be true. In the message today during the experience, she shared that can we be more open and understanding and accepting when someone's belief systems is so polar opposite of ours. And I feel that that's why I love this faith odyssey that I'm on is because I have an understanding of different perspectives. I know that your perception of the world is going to play a role in what you believe to be true. And the woman that sent me the message that, you know, told me like, you should look at God in all things. I said, thank you. And then she went on to tell me what works for her and almost as if she was projecting her experience as to if I don't believe this, then I'm wrong. And she's having a good time in her life by these belief systems and by connecting to the way that she believes and almost like what I'm doing isn't right. And I'm like, how do you, you don't know me that well, first of all. Second of all, I know what I'm doing is the journey and the path that I'm going on. Is it right? I don't know. I'm still in exploration. So for you to tell me what I should be doing is the smallness or the the closeness of your mind like be open to my journey you can learn something from it right like I don't believe that I know everything always and that's why I'm on this quest or this odyssey something that I heard massively before is that when you believe your way is the only way right or your explanation is the best explanation You simply close yourself off to being able to learn and be a student of life, right? I always give this example. I know goal setting. I can tell you 10 different ways on how to goal set, right? But I used to say, I know goal setting. I don't need to hear it. Why would I hear it? I know goal setting. 
until I decided to say, if there's something that's so elementary that I already know, can I open my mind to be able to learn how they explain it? Or maybe there's a different approach to it, right? Now, that's why I have 10 different ways, or I'm just giving a number of how to goal set because I can speak to different people and their belief systems because I was open to understanding different ways of walking through life, right? I don't know where this faith odyssey is taking me. I'm just literally being the drone in the room, the fly on the wall, creating an understanding of what faith and God is to me in this lifetime. So that's my journey. It's vulnerable. It's real. I still don't know. I'm questioning. I'm open to conversations that make me feel contracted, that make me feel uncomfortable, that speak in a language that I can't understand. I'm just open. I'm open. I'm like, hand it over to God. We'll see what happens. This is a journey and I'm here for it. Just go ahead and give me a like, a comment if you have questions. Give me a follow if you want to follow along my journey. I will be creating YouTube videos every week sharing a new church, temple, mosque, spiritual experience, gathering that I go through that will help me connect deeper to God to understand my faith and what that means for me here in this lifetime. Thank you, and I will see you next week.